女士们、先生们，有请上海国展展览中心有限公司总经理吴江红先生。Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Wu, General Manager, Shanghai Intex Exhibition. 亚洲消费。CES Asia is the only that integrates technical and technological ecosystem together with all the other technical ecosystems. Insightful professionals gathered here to share with each other visions into the future. Lenovo has its site far away into the future. Covering 160 plus countries with a business of、uh, 45 billion dollars, and as a Fortune 500 company, Lenovo is dedicated to using innovation to develop products and offer services. Next, there will be two four-sided leaders from Lenovo to take the stage of CES Asia. First is Mr. Ablikim Ablimit. He is the vice president of strategy and business development in China. He will share with us his、uh, vision on smart Lenovo and serving the world. He will also talk about the four strategic layouts of transformation. Next, after him, vice president of Lenovo Group, Dr. Chang Chen, will take the stage to talk about. The application of AI and blockchain, and its and their significance in the development of smart mobile phones. But first, let's welcome Mr. Ablikim Ablimit to take the stage of CES Asia. Good afternoon. Lots of you must have known me already or have heard of me. I am Ablikim Ablimit, and you can call me in Chinese Amu. I am in charge of Lenovo's strategic transformation and new business development in China. I want to share with you. How Lenovo has accelerated the transformation itself after attempt to seize opportunities out there in the market. I want to share with you our thoughts and the outcomes of these attempts. If you've visited N1 to N5 pavilions, then you must have found that.、Uh, Smart interconnection of things, smart homes, wearables, smart solutions, and all sorts of things like that permeate the entirety of the pavilions. They sometimes can be very perplexing. Almost everyone from every company wants to approach this market using these conceptions. However, what we today want to talk about is beyond new products, new services, or new philosophies. To change the IoT market, but instead our topic is one thing. With so many experimentations, with so many accumulations of things, how to kindle the era of、uh, smart IoT? Making sure that it's just a carnival of the industry, but also the carnival of users. With the Maturation of PC and internet, the whole industrial value chain upgraded. When mobile phones cropped up under the leadership of gigantic companies across the world, it also started to become mature. But now we need another match to be kindled to set to the fire the entire IoT industry. So. Over the past years, we've done a couple of things working in this direction, and that will be the first part of my presentation. We started on the 16th of May 2017, when 
the veteran Mr. Liu Jun came back to Lenovo China, and since then, the development of uh, Lenovo was expedited. And uh, after the 18th of August, when we had the Sunrise in the East strategy, our consumption-led revolution kicked off. And uh, in November the same year, we had the SIoT Think Plus launched. Then next year, in January, we opened the first Lenovo store in Beijing. In April, we had the brand new conception of the four racing tracks or the four strategic layouts as the key conception. In April 2018, we had LED launched. And in May this year, our members exceeded the number of 50 million. In May on the 29th, uh, we had our Pan IT B2B e-commerce platform uh, up and running, and uh, we launched new phones in June. We have been trying to seize the opportunities of uh, the digital economy and the services surrounding them, and the opportunities provided by the new opportunities in the digital companies. And we also have the opportunities in smart IoT, utilizing smart devices in the IoT field. And with these three sets of opportunities, we've made the above said attempts. And they can be wrapped up by the smart Lenovo service in China philosophy. After 20 years of internationalization, after covering over 160 countries, we now come back again to China to make it as a base camp to continue to grow. It also means that uh, we will continue to experiment in China and output what we score and achieve in China to scale up our level of internationalization. But it needs transformation. First, we need to be customer-centric instead of product-centric. And by, prod by customer-centric, we mean experience-centric and value-centric instead of product-management-centric. What's more, we should become the smart product solution and service provider instead of a device provider to make sure that the entire life cycle of our retail users and business users can enjoy the full life cycle services from us instead of the single point uh, transactions. So with these thoughts in mind, we proposed the concept of the four uh, transformation racing tracks or four strategic layouts of transformation. We have been crystallizing it into the four aspects that are listed here. The first racing track just like what has been emphasized in CES Asia, smart interconnection of things had become the new theme of our times when smartphones have matured. Lenovo relies not only on our own proprietary devices, but also empower other brands, including Think Plus and uh, Lecu in the business and consumption arena to try to increase the application of devices. And we've also introduced the smart choice devices. We've also opened smart IoT cloud platform to provide comprehensive smart experience and services. The second racing track is the smart industry. And it's also with the aim of seizing the opportunities in the market. We have five vertical areas, education, manufacturing, retail, medical, and uh, transportation. We have accumulated experience. We have the leadership position in the market. We have the number of users. And we can utilize those to provide comprehensive services in these vertical areas. And smart services. We want to provide not just after-sale services. We need to provide cloud deployment services, operation services after they go onto the cloud. That's for the big companies. We should also provide services, the O2O delivery and uh, operation platform to the SMEs as well. We want that SMEs in the future won't need any cloud team and just use our deployment capabilities. 
theoretically, it should already be happening so, because uh, now the technical, technological ecosystems have changed a lot. And with the remote technologies, SMEs should not pay a lot to benefit from our services. And we should not cost a lot to benefit the SMEs because of our accumulation of technologies and experience. Number four, we, ha we should have the smart channels. And uh, these channels can cover the IoT devices. And we have a new Sunshine program to cover the needs of the consumers. And uh, channels have been what Lenovo has been very good at for a long time, because we have tens of thousands or uh, approaching to 10,000 stores. Apart from selling PCs in these stores, we can expand them to e-commerce and e-retail platforms. And we crystallize them uh, and uh, put this concept in place in the form of the brand stores or Lenovo stores. We also have the B2B IT product and service e-commerce platform targeting the businesses out there on the market. I want to emphasize the first racing track before all the other three. In the interest of time, I will only share with you one point instead of all four. In terms of the smart interconnect of things, Saidi Think Tank mentioned that 2018 will be the first year in which the interconnected devices will outnumber the interconnected human beings. So this outnumbering starts officially from 2018. And in the years to come, there will be even faster growth of interconnected things and devices. And behind that, huge business opportunities will explode. And uh, in two to three years, the numbers will uh, triple or even quadruple. I want to talk about their implications in the consumption market. Because it's just not it's not just the business market that's going to be positively influenced. Well, in the at the very beginning we had a smart earth and then we had IoT. It's not been long that we've had this conception. And then lots of companies cropped up doing their own small areas of things, say integration, say chips. They approached IoT through different channels, trying to snatch up a part of this market share. We believe that uh, everything has been complete and full-fledged. AI, big data, and all the smart IoT technologies have matured. And some products, through experimentation, have already materialized and uh, entering to the stage of mass production. Not only that, the products have already entered the homes and been worn by many consumers. So the entire value chain from chips to service contents has become complete. And the division of labor is also rich enough. The pattern of development in this area is similar to PCs and smartphones in the past. When the industrial value chain is mature enough, we don't need extra forces for potential to be unleashed. And what's more, if you've looked at statistics in terms of investments in smart IoT, you will find that there are a lot more than the past, not just those looking for IPO and those already uh, floated on the stock market, they find that smart IoT is an important of their portfolio and uh, the capital injects new vitality to this industry. Now we have everything. We only need the east wind. What can we use to truly ignite the SIoT industry? Some say we need to rely on soundbox. Perhaps we can sell more voice-based soundbox. Voice interaction will be the tipping point for the explosion of this industry. We can lower the price, we can increase the sales. Can we, can we ignite the SIoT industry by doing this? No. This is a concept of a product or technology. After purchasing these product, usually after two to three weeks, this product will be just put aside. 
but it has not really changed people's life or brought any value. Or maybe we can lower the price. We can lower the price to a stage where there is no more profit for the companies and no more SME can still survive. Do we really have to do this? If we look back to the desktop and the PC era, this is not the way we did things. Rather, I think the true value lies in the profitability of company. The value should be redistributed to more people rather than be controlled by a few monopolies. So being cheap is not the driving force for the development of this industry. Or maybe some people say 5G, we need more connectivity and we need stronger backbone network. Perhaps maybe when the commercialization of 5G, 5G is here, we will be able to develop this as IoT industry. But I don't think this is the answer. Actually, internet or network is always there. However, to truly develop the industry, we cannot just rely on internet. So what can we use? Some people say maybe we can be special or unique. Maybe we can look at different vertical industries and in each vertical market we only have to sell thousands of the product and we, ha we want to make sure that your life is filled with smart devices. Maybe by doing this we will be able to ignite this industry. I don't think this is the answer either. It can help us to find the, a good product, but this is not the answer we want. To be consumer-centric, we have to look back to the original driving force of the industry. That is, could you really provide a brand new uh, consumer experience? And c new consumer experience is not a piling up of existing consumer experiences. For example, from the keyboard to touch screen, it changed our experience and we, we redefined what a better life is and by doing this we really released the value of the industry and after that thousands of companies come into the industry and this industry will truly be led by the market and the consumer rather than led by technology and product and I believe this is the tipping point for this industry and this is our answer so for smart connectivity now we don't think uh, now the smart connecti connectivity help us solve all kinds of pain points. Rather, it creates a lot of anxieties. For example, for smart interconnection, it still needs a lot of uh, manual interference. It is more like a people connection, be it a smart uh, home, uh, household appliances, a smart vehicle, or a wearable devices. You have to have the technology you have to have the technology knowledge in order to use this device properly. You have to serve the device in order to get serviced by this device. And at the end of the day, we will dump it. And secondly, we are faced with the smart silo. Each company built their own ecosystem. However, for users, they are all kinds of silos. No one will only use the product produced by one brand. Users want the best solutions. So at the end of the day, you find that you need to invest more time, efforts, and even money to maintain different connections. And the result is that the consumer will quit using our device. And this is a silo. And the third problem is the smart regret because smart is driven by technology, not experience. So it gives people all kinds of special and interesting experience. For example, you can tell your microwave oven to heat something for 30 seconds, but I just don't understand. You have been there in front of the microwave oven and you put the meat in it. Why do you have to talk to it? So it is smart, but it doesn't make any change. So this is the smart regret. However, our users are tolerant enough to pay the money, purchase the technology, and use the technology at home. So the consumers have been so tolerant. Still, our product is not good enough. If we continue like this, this industry will not be able to truly develop. So these are the smart anxiety we have. 
So at the end of the day, we found that we spent the money, we spent the time, but nothing changed. You paid, but still your life does not become better because of it. Rather, it your life became it becomes more complicated and complex. And for Lenovo, I think we are still on the way. We still need to spend more time on developing better solutions. But we try to deploy our business in the SIoT industry from the perspective of experience. So for people connection, I think for Lenovo, we believe there is only one answer. That is, the connection of things must be finished before the product is shaped. I believe many colleagues and partners have already realized this issue. And for Lenovo, how do we do it? Well, we invest in three things in order to make sure the connection of things can be done before the shipment and the user only need to experience the product. First, we build a open connection system. The connection system integrate all kinds of operations and uh, things that the user used to uh, have to learn the knowledge about how to use them. It is not just a simple SDK. And also, we can provide modules that is uh, development-free and connection-free. Also, we should provide the smart gateway product. So, the Lenovo's product module and the gateway will be included in this connection system and also we work with other manufacturers and partners so the connection issue can be solved at the back end. The user have only have to purchase the product and open the package. And secondly, we need to provide the user with a worry-free experience interface. The user only have to use the device out of the box. So the user don't have to buy the product, uh, plug in the USB, and then use it. Use it. The user only have to buy it, and uh, then, the, for example, the, the the lamp will be lit up. So if we can truly provide this kind of experience, we will, we uh, that time we can make sure that product will be affiliated to people's life. Therefore, a worry-free experience interface include a super interface, a UI interface, and smart voice. We have to combine all factors together to make sure that the management and interaction of uh, the smart device will not be blocked by technical not by the lack of uh, technical knowledge. And uh, the third thing is uh, the establishment of a closed-loop service system. The consumer don't have to worry about service, be it remote, on-site, or offline. We have already built the service system for you. The user only have to use it. If there is a problem, the user don't have to be worried because with data transmission, we have already know what the issue is and we can help the user remotely. So now the user can truly take control. And here I'd like to brief on the progress made by Lenovo. First is about the open connection system. Currently, after one year of R&D and experiment, we have uh, launched the SDK on our, develop, uh, on our developer website and it can be connected with a lot of smart devices. And also, we have launched the Lenovo Wi-Fi module equipped with the essential softwares at a competitive price. So the IoT developer and the providers as well as manufacturers can quickly solve the issue of connection. And also with Zigbee, we can make sure that all the smart uh, all the smart devices, uh, all, all the smart devices and the softwares will be development and connection free. They only have to open the package and use the device and software. And later we are going to launch the Wi-Fi module SDK and um, the SDK for the 5G era, as well as the SDK without redevelopment. Our engineer will solve the issues for the users beforehand. And also for modules, we are going to launch the Zigbee module to provide low energy consumption connection. And also, also we are going to provide a Zigbee plus Bluetooth gateway, gateway. And also we are going to partner with the module vendors. In doing so, 
very quickly we can improve the efficiency. And also at the gateway, we are going to launch the uh, Bluetooth gateway and the Zigbee Plus Bluetooth gateway to solve the automatic connection of smart devices at home. So for the second anxiety, in the interest of time, I will not delve into details. The second anxiety is the smart silo. Silo is always the pain point of each company, especially now the platform and ecosystem is uh, is dominating the entire industry. Silo becomes even more outstanding. In the mobile internet era, how do we solve the silo issue? Well, actually, it is very cruel. We eliminate all other competitors and leave only two people in it. And that, 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 that was how we solved the silo issue. However, in the SIoT era, usually the connectivities will happen in different scenarios where there will be different requirements and we have to focus on both the consumption and the commercial markets. It is different from the mobile market. We can't expect a, a unicorn to appear and solve all the problems for us. Rather, it requires that all capable company must be tolerant enough, they must be open, they must be connected, and they must share information with each other in order to break the silo. And I believe this is the difference of the era of SIoT industry. And for Lenovo, I believe the answer is that we need an open platform to connect everything, not just devices, but also platforms. And we did three things in this regard. First, we built the Open SIoT cloud platform. After one and a half years of development and adjustment, debugging and configuration, now this platform is stable and we have over uh, 10 million users and we have uh, thousands of connections operating on it. We don't want to highlight how many Lenovo devices are connected on it. We want to highlight how many connections it has with other platforms. So apart from the AI engine, the, uh, the, uh, device management, user management, service management, content and application management, I believe something more important is that first, this platform can be connected with three types of products. First is uh, the uh, self-developed product of uh, Lenovo. Secondly, it can be connected with the empowerment equipment, namely the equipment or devices produced by our partners. And also it can be connected with the third party platforms and the devices. For the third party platforms, they they don't have to replace their platforms with the uh, Lenovo platform. Rather, they just have to connect their platform with our SIoT cloud platforms. And also, we built a consistent multi-device management platform because for users, they don't care what brand you are, what device you are. They only want one interface. So with one API, they want to uh, configure all the scenarios. They don't even want to uh, configure or uh, they don't even configure the consumer terminal to set up their devices. Therefore, we need a multi-device management platform. So in this scenario, we need a customer's, uh, consumer's scenario. Uh, cons we need a consumer's terminal and also we need a household connection hub and a personal connection hub. However, we still don't have the family connection hub in the market. Therefore, Lenovo did a lot to develop this family connection hub to connect different smart devices. It is not a gateway. It is not a router. It is just a private cloud. It is your household based computing center to connect different devices of different brands. And also, it can provide you with great content experience. This is the architecture of the Open SIoT cloud platform. Apart from the thing at the middle, which we spend a lot of time and energy in, on one hand, we can open ourselves to the third-party contents and services. And on the other hand, we can be connected to the big IoT platforms and uh, the IoT platforms belonging to smaller companies but also of premium quality. But the intercompatibility and interconnection through the interfaces is a big feature of ours. That uh, Everybody will have their own data, have their own value, 
we are not condescending, killing those SMEs. We're not doing that. And what I want to emphasize again is that to, to be open, we need to open ourselves. So we have this Lenovo SIoT empowerment platform opening our five capabilities to the whole of the business arena and the society to co-develop uh, products targeting at improvement of experience. First of all, we believe that uh, companies don't have the ability to develop products. Uh, innovation, creativity and ideas cannot materialize because it requires lots of uh, resources, a lot of capabilities. But we have three international research centers leading design capabilities, 200 billion uh, RMB of pooled money to empower companies to develop products. Lots of companies also lack channels because good products or even good services should only satisfy the ego of the companies themselves without having a good channel that reach out to the consumers. So we have a 10,000 stores network. We have a membership of 50 million users and uh, more than 80,000 business service providers to empower the companies that lack the channels. What's more, the companies find it hard to service their products. Lots of the product users don't know where to complain wherever there is a problem that arises. Now we have uh, over 2,400 service stations scattered across China. We have more than 10,000 professionals who provide after-sale services and also a very high-quality service delivery system that empower these companies. And sometimes the companies don't have the AI capability which requires the accumulation of experience and capabilities over a long period of time. And uh, the return on investment is very low. And Small and medium companies won't have these capabilities, but we have. We have our computational power. We have amassed big data over the past decade, so we can power them, sometimes even for free. And number five, considering that there are companies don't have the underlying cloud platform, they don't have the money to do that, they can't scale up their businesses in the service of uh, millions of customers. That's why they can use our open SIoT platform. They can use our modules, gateways, and they can use the in, uh, intercompatible, the compatible interfaces to scale up their businesses. And these five capabilities that we empower those companies can solve their smartness silos. And it is started by we opening ourselves to talk to device A, which is a speaker, for the A speaker to trigger a B device, and B device also triggers C device. Sometimes you need three apps to manage these three devices. The devices will be simple, but the human beings will be confounded. They will be confused in operating to maneuver all these three devices. And that's because of the smartness silos. All of us should be dedicated to solve this issue and solve this pain point of experience. Another smartness is, is the smartness uh, pity, the pity of smartness. They like it, but after they buy it, they would uh, shelve it. How to solve the problem of people shelving it? We need to deliver comprehensive experience on the basis of scenarios. We should not deliver uh, individual and separate devices or hardware. We should not do that. It's a pain point. So how to deliver them? How to deliver the experience on the basis of scenario? In the past, we didn't have the conception of scenarios. Everything was based on technology. It was about using a device solving all the problems and uh, adding on functions and applications on the device. But we need to solve life experience issues. Uh, it's about scenarios. Our first attempt is at smart uh, housekeeper. 
I see that there are lots of uh, smart home solutions out there in the exhibition. We also have it. We have uh, comprehensive products, including door lock, which I don't put on the screen. We have the embedded modules that can be connected without development, without configuration. We also provide uh, we also also provide content and services. We provide the platform and application for the user to configure the device only with one click. They don't need to care about all the compatibility issues and all the other technicalities other than using one click to enable the platform and applications. And we also have the mini speaker. Apart from being tiny and portable, it has a huge amount of contents incorporated in it. And uh, it also has the speech recognition engine and semantic understanding technology to not just uh, shopping, enable shopping at home, but also uh, enable it as a housekeeper. I wish that everyone in the room should work in it should work in this direction instead of creating different silos by creating your own products. What's more smart entertainment? We've been introducing VR and AR products. Lately, after the introduction of the AR products based on Star Trek, we have another product called AR Play, Mirage AR Play. Uh, it has lots of uh, optical design and uh, dynamic tracking investments to make sure that uh, people can use this AR Play uh, device for a long time and with a great amount of entertainment because we've embedded in this device lots of games and applications. Uh, apart from opening up our SIoT cloud platform, we also have SDK and apps to enable that consumers can experience entertainment instead of sourcing different contents from different sources and developers. We also have a karaoke console. It has been fine-tuned to make it as professional in quality and uh, audio and visual effects as possible. But also, it enables everybody to scan the code to have access to an ocean amount of uh, songs on the cloud. It is a very important thing. And uh, smart network. In the past, all the devices were based in silo, but now we are able to connect them using our intelligent router. And apart from what the conventional routers can do, it enables lots of other functionalities and services. For example, it can back up your photos and download audio and vi uh, video documents. It is also enjoying SIoT cloud platforms. It has within it new Wi-Fi equivalent mining farm so that a network can, be, can become an asset, a lucrative asset, and enables blockchain mining. And uh, apart from our Z5 phone that we launched on the 5th of June, we also had a distributed storage launched the same day. Apart from storing data, pictures, videos, and etc., we also enables the management of uh, photos, films, and personal spaces. And uh, we enable it to mine bitcoins. And we enable it to enjoy our membership loyalty program. And uh, we can also enable it to be part of the SIoT cloud management platform. What's more, we have a Leku baby uh, recorder. It is of high resolution. It is embedded with batteries because the babies run on your bed. It is impossible for him or her to be still. So for your device to record the actions and behaviors of your babies real time, 24-7, it needs a very high battery capability. And we have exactly that. And apart from that, we have services and contents, including producing the baby uh, albums. We produce the baby's memes in it, and uh, we can also update you with the latest baby care information. And because it is targeted at uh, mothers, parents, they are 
uh, provide it with personalized and dedicated AP apps. And I use it to take snapshots of my babies because all day long my baby can run into different awkward moments and uh, the device can capture these awkward moments. And these awkward moments are labeled in a long span of the video so that you don't need to watch the entire video to capture those memes. And we also have a uh, baby speaker. Apart from being a conventional speaker, it has our own intellectual property. It has our own IP assets and services. It is also using its IoT cloud platform. And uh, it collects the voices of the babies, the speeches of the babies, and enables uh, speech interaction, voice interaction as well, to have greater appeal to the babies. We have female scenarios, kitchen scenarios, living room scenarios, and many other scenarios, or mobility scenarios, uh, personal life scenario, wearable scenarios. Scenario is the most fundamental. Lots more scenarios are on the way of being delivered to uh, the consumers. So, in one word, we have this SIoT ecosystem so that on the basis of experience, everything revolving experience, we rely on the SIoT open platform to have access to the three different types of sources to provide ultimate services and products to two categories of users, commercial and retail users. It is fully compatible with other systems, and we hope that this open ecosystem can accelerate its pace of development and we can have more partners on board to strengthen and enhance its capability. And I sincerely invite all of you the companies that you represent and the partners that work with you to join this open SIoT uh, ecosystem that represents our uh, first racing track so that uh, there will be more and more hardware manufacturers who can join our ecosystem to make sure that they can deliver the product as soon as possible to be used by the consumers. And secondly, we also invite big or small device manufacturers, be it home appliance manufacturers, but also SMEs, to join this SIoT open platform to enter our sales, promotion, and uh, marketing and operation network to become the part of smart choices to improve the experience of the consumers. Number three, we invite the chip manufacturers, module manufacturers, content service providers to join the SIoT co-op that we launched last year to go towards the direction of providing more premium, high-quality services in a customer-centric way to make consumers understand that uh, these are not just inanimate objects and digital stuff but experience, but about life. And we don't want to do it alone. We want to do it with all of you. And of course, you can go to the booth number 1018 in N1 to experience all the products that we've launched. Your criticisms and suggestions are all welcome. If you think that they are good, then let's sit down and talk to share with each other your ideas about how to solve these pain points in a better way. No matter how smart IoT develop. However it develops, there is one thing that's crucial. That's the smartphone. It is the medium. It is the carrier. In the past few years, we have achieved great results in the sales of uh, Lenovo mobile phone. And after years of experiments and uh, developments from last year, the Lenovo mobile phone returns to the market. And we hope to create the value for the consumers. Therefore, we repositioned our mobile phone. And on the 5th of June, we launched the new generation of uh, Lenovo smartphone. And uh, now our slogan is quality but affordable mobile phone for our consumers. And we want to provide our new uh, smartphone and a, sm a new mobile phone to consumers who have always liked our brand. So for the innovation of um, 
mobile phone, what kind of innovation will be there in the next five years, and what is the position of Lenovo? Now, I'd like to give the floor to Dr. Chang Cheng, VP of Lenovo Group and head of for the Lenovo Mobile Business Greater China. Difference from media. Good afternoon. My name is Chang Cheng. Thank you for coming and uh, listening to our presentation about the next five years of uh, smartphones. Usually, on the launch of a mobile phone, we talk a lot about the details of uh, our phone. However, about the plan for the next five years, usually no companies will disclose such confidential detail to the uh, audience. But here, now we are here, we are going to share with you our plan for the next five years. And we have four keywords to predict the future. It is easy. You just have to stretch your arm on one hand, uh, stretch your arm on one end. It is the technology on the uh, uh, one on one end. It is the demand on the other end. It is the technologies. So if you have great technology and if you can see the demand, you will find the opportunities. So stretch your arm. You will try to see the pain point on the consumer's end and also see the trends on the technology end. And how can we combine the demand with the technology? And this is how we predict the next five years for the mobile phone. So four keywords: display, AI. Blockchain. I think Lenovo invested a lot for blockchain based mobile phone, and this will be the future direction. And the last one is the 5G technologies. Lenovo invested a lot of technology on these four directions, and many plans will be announced in our launch of new phones. So, first, display. Perhaps you don't have a very uh, obvious feeling about it be because I just mentioned the consumer and I can show you two figures. First, perhaps you never felt this, but on the left it is it, it is 2008, on the right it is 2017, about a 10 year span. You can see the blue part on top of it. <coughs> You can see time spent on mobile phone increased by 10 times, 10 times in 10 years, and we can all feel this. Today I'm here in Shanghai, and I only bring my mobile phone with this, not my laptop, because everything can be done on my mobile phone. At home, it is also true. So we watch the TV while playing with our mobile phone. So we spend a lot of time on mobile phone, and the most, uh, the majority of time spent on mobile phone will be spent on display. And therefore, I think the display should be the breakthrough point for the next generation mobile phone. And the second figure, this is the uh, definition of uh, the mobile display in the past 10 years. So it has been improved by four times. So now our uh, view experience has become better and more comfortable. Therefore, we think in the coming one to two years, maybe it will be even earlier. Starting from September, in the next generation of a smartphone, we will see a lot of changes on display. And we have shown you our first answer, which is the Z5. And we use a very good display. This is a this is uh, a full display. It has a wide color range, and also the size of the display is big enough. The ultimate purpose is to give the best experience to the users, because usually every day, 90% of the time will be spent on the mobile phone. So we want to give them the best experience. So looking into the future, now many people talk about the upper part of a mobile phone the notch of the mobile phone. So I think there are several problems that uh, many uh, manufacturers try to solve. Two questions are very outstanding. So how to create a great display? So something we can see on the display is the speaker. And, and uh, the other day, I saw a very good solution. But I think we still have better solutions to come. And also, we have two invisible problems on the display. 
So it now it is very easy for Rust to size down the jaw of uh, the mobile phone. However, it is not easy to do that. There are many physical limitations. We have to make sure the lower part of the mobile phone can be slimmer. Maybe next year we will see some new product solving this pain point. And also the Athena. Now, even though we use a, we use WeChat a lot, but the basic function of a mobile phone is to make phone calls. Therefore, we need to deal with the Athena. I believe in the future, all these technologies will be highly integrated with the display. And Lenovo made a lot of uh, technology reserve. And at the end of this year, we are going to launch our new product. And we call it everything on display, meaning everything will be combined with the display. So this is our first future direction. The second direction, future direction, is AI. People say that uh, Lenovo spend a lot of time talking about AI on its uh, architecture and the technologies. So to develop AI in Lenovo, in my view, what is the difference of Lenovo from iFlyTech and Baidu? If compared with them, what is the advantages? What are the advantages of Lenovo for iFlyTech and Baidu, and also other foreign companies as well as Google, uh, like Google and Amazon? I think they have very good voice capabilities. But as an equipment manufacturers, we have a natural advantage. That means we can solve problems at the level of a system. What does that mean? Simply put, if you use the iFlyTech voice and you have a A map and also you installed IGE app on your mobile phone, I cannot control the app or the Gauda map or navigation or IGE with the iFlyTech voice. However, at the uh, system level, we can connect all these uh, applications. We create the le voice, so you just have to talk to your phone. For example, send, uh, take me to uh, Hongqiao Airport Terminal 2, and uh, then it will trigger the navigation and uh, pick a route for you. Or you can talk to your phone that I want a Lenovo mobile phone, and uh, then the JD app will be initiated. And I believe this is what distinguished the product of uh, Lenovo from other companies. And the second thing is the uh, photography. AI can be used for taking pictures. For several scenarios, for example, the low light, backlight, portray. These are scenarios that is very difficult for companies and technologists to deal with. We work with a lot of uh, world leading partners to adjust our module and uh, system in order to provide a better solution to the users. And uh, these are some applications of AI. At the end of this year, we are going to launch a new AI related product. The third future direction is the blockchain. In March this year, we released the blockchain-based mobile phone. Many people think it is just a joke, but today I would like to share with you why so many times and efforts have been spent on this kind of mobile phone. We are all using smartphones. Actually, there is a problem that all people have this concern about privacy, like your photos, your uh, video calls, or maybe even your account numbers and passwords. How can we make sure this information will stay safe on the mobile phone? When Facebook has uh, encountered their issues, this has become a worldwide concern. And one day we saw the technology of blockchain and we start to think that perhaps blockchain will change the entire situation. Why? Because all of this is about trust and blockchain become, uh, can truly becomes can truly become a measurement of trust in a limited space. Everybody can trust each other because we have a standard or we have we have a set of criteria to measure our trust. And this is why we spend so many time so much time on the development of a blockchain. And we released the Lenovo blockchain white paper. 
We hope with this white paper, we can build a trust-based uh, new terminal. For example, today we are in Kerry for this conference. Maybe there is a world based on blockchain. In that world, the smart devices or smartphone, what will they be like? What are the requirements for the smartphone in that world? I don't think anybody have thought about it. And at the end of this year, we are going to bring you a blockchain-based or trust-based smartphone, which is totally different from the existing mobile phones or smartphones in the market. And it will give you a totally brand new experience. You don't have to worry about your privacy, your photos, or your account numbers. So this is about this is our thought about the future. And at the same time, we are also building a ecosystem surrounding this uh, terminal and at the end of uh, this year we are going to launch more product and today I'm going to give you two examples for the 2C and for the consumer we can't just tell you about the benefit of a blockchain and I think blockchain speaks for itself in terms of uh, mining or we can say it is related to the Bitcoin mining in June this year we launched a product called Leeds Wallet so it means when you play with your mobile phone, you are, you are also mining the Bitcoin. Like Amu said, it is diff uh, different from Amu said. So uh, you have to use your Wi-Fi to mine the Bitcoin. Now you play with your mobile phone and at the same time you can mine the Bitcoin. And at the end of uh, this year, we are going to unveil the secret to you. And this is the first product we developed on the smartphone. And secondly, we developed the Leeds Cloud. And uh, this is used to solve the pain point that you have a lot of things and you store all your uh, information on Baidu Cloud. But still you think it is not safe, especially when you have to store your private information on the cloud, you think it is not safe. But uh, if you purchase a flash drive and store everything on it, you might have the worry that if the flash drive is broken, how can we deal with this? Therefore, we try to develop a new product which can address the issue of privacy. You don't have to worry about your privacy when you store your information on it. On the other hand, we can address the issue of uh, losing this product. So we developed the Leeds Cloud in the mode of uh, sharing. Everything you store on it will never be lost because we use the technology of uh, blockchain. We use the distributed storage to make sure that everything you store on this cloud will never be lost. And at the end of the year, before the unveiling of the blockchain terminal, we are also going to publish this product. You can try it out yourself. Thirdly, last but not the least, the 5G technology. Lenovo has done a lot on the 5G connectivity. We did it because we believe 5G will truly extend our imagination when we try to uh, address different scenarios. And Amu mentioned the SIoT, and I also said well, on one hand we have the demand, on the other hand we have the technology. Currently, now the smartphone is the most important device in the consumer's hand because it consumes a lot of consumers' time. In the coming five years, what device will be able to replace the mobile phone? Or in other words, the 90% of the time that people spend on the mobile phones should be reduced, for example, to 70%. And what will that device be? We believe that this device has already appeared and this sort of device appears because of the new 5G standards. And we believe that there will be new devices cropping up because of 5G. 5G extends our imagination. What sort of unimaginable devices will come into birth in the future? We don't know, but there are limitless opportunities. So apart from investing a lot on smartphones and from, uh, on the devices in the SIoT ecosystem that people couldn't think about in the past.
That has been what I've emphasized today, display AI, blockchain, and 5G. With all these four elements together, we launched Z5 in June, and uh, we ranked number one on the JD charts after the launch, on the first day of the launch. And uh, we had the second launch this year, uh, this day, and uh, it is being sold out completely because it is an integration of uh, blockchain AI with a very good display. On the basis of these elements, we are reshaping the Lenovo's smartphones. And the reshaping happens as a result of our forecast and predictions of the trends and developments in the next five years. You're more than welcome to visit our booth and uh, try our phones out. The organizer wanted me to talk about the next five years of phones. The president of uh, Xiaomi used to say that you spend the next quarter as five years. I think it's rather true because five years will be too long for us to see clearly. I think it's already very good for us to rightly predict what's going to happen in the next one or two quarters. So for me to make a prediction over the next, part, next five years, my answer is the next five years will be dominated by Lenovo, will be, will be created and we'll have Lenovo as a major player. Thank you.